Today, we're headed to Canada's east coast and the beautiful Cape Breton Island in Nova Scotia. From the beautiful beaches lighting its coast, to the majestic highlands in the north, and the scenic views driving through the world-famous Cabot Trail, Cape Breton Island has been named one of the best island destinations in North America by National Geographic and travel magazines. We'll be fishing in the gorgeous Marguerite River, which is considered to be the best Atlantic salmon river in Nova Scotia. Starting from the highlands of Cape Breton and making its way out to the Gulf of St. Lawrence, the icy clear waters are a mecca for spawning Atlantic salmon and trout. We're staying at the Big Intervale Fishing Lodge, a quiet, tucked away fishing getaway which borders the Marguerite River. Our gracious hosts were Herman and Ruth, who are also avid fly fishers themselves, as evidently shown on the photos of them and all of the past guests all over the walls of the main lodge. The main lodge itself offers a restaurant and bar with delicious Swiss-inspired food using local ingredients and garden-fresh herbs and vegetables. I highly recommend Herman's seafood chowder and, of course, their salmon dish. If you ever plan to visit Cape Breton and fish the Marguerite, I'd recommend them in a heartbeat. They even have this beautiful piece of art made out of all the different locally tied salmon flies and it's absolutely gorgeous. Now a quick tour of the cabins. Starting from the exterior, you can tell that they have all been recently renovated. From the bathrooms to the bedrooms, the inside is really clean and modern and provides you with all of the regular necessities like fridge, stoves, and microwaves. But the best part? You're literally steps away from the river. So after you've had your delicious lunch at the lodge, you can cool off from the afternoon summer heat by taking a dip in the cool waters of the Marguerite River. Before hitting the water, I dropped by the Tying Scotsman, a local fly shop owned by Alex, to pick up some local flies, tied by him of course, and to get some intel on the fishing for today. So here we are on the Marjorie River in Nova Scotia. And guys, take a look at this. This place is just absolutely gorgeous. Oh my goodness, look at that. The water is so clear. You've got beautiful running water. This, this is coming from like the mountain, mountain area. So the water's flowing from the mountain area downstream this way. And it floats all the way out there and out into the ocean. And it's just absolutely gorgeous out here, man. Um, the river here is unlike any river that we have in Manitoba. And that's, that's sort of why I wanted to come out here and, uh, and do this, was to be able to fly fish in a river like this. Because it's like, I don't know, man. It's just like something about fly fish in a river, fly fish in moving water like this, fly fish in an absolutely gorgeous river. Um, it's just like the stuff that fly fishermen's dreams are made of, right? And uh, man, it's like 6 in the morning right now and it's just absolutely gorgeous out. It's not hot. We got here a couple days ago and it's just been super hot. I got in touch with a couple of the local guys here. I uh, spoke to somebody at a local fly shop. If you guys um, are ever in the area and you want to fly fish out here, make sure you guys check out Alex at The Tying Scotsman. Uh, out here on Cape Breton Island in Nova Scotia. Um, check out his shop and uh, he's got some really great local intel. He pointed me towards uh, this part here where there's a little pool. Actually there's a bunch of like little salmon pools and stuff like that out here on the Martry but you guys can see here water's flowing out this way and then it gets deep out in this area right here. So um, my plan is I'm gonna be fishing out this pool right here and see if we can catch anything. Um, unfortunately, when I spoke with some of the local guys out here, guys, um, I missed the salmon run, as usual. Uh, the last time I went out to BC, I missed the salmon run by like two weeks. And now I missed the salmon run by like a week. So, chances of me getting some salmon, pretty slim. But, um, 
they told me that there's always trout out here in these waters anyway so hopefully we do get on some trout and uh oh i think i just seen a fish rise oh yep yeah. fish just rose right over there they told me that there's always trout in these waters so that's what we're going to go for today guys we're going to start out on some of the uh, salmon flies that uh, i got from alex at the tying scotsman uh, he said that you should be able to get some trout on those same flies too so always good to get some local flies when you're going out to a different place and uh, we're gonna start off with that and get some lines in the water let's go all right guys so first couple casts right here in this pool i switch it up to a dry fly um, using a little uh, parachute atom right there just because we saw the fish rise so we use the dry fly right now and see if we can get any luck on the dry oh fish on first fish of the day and we are in Nova Scotia and it is a beautiful oh, we gotta get this in the net guys we gotta get this in the net yeah oh look at that it is a brook trout what a beautiful brookie beautiful all right guys so i caught this guy on uh just a beauty look at that beautiful fish right there and he's gone he's gone he slipped through slipped through the uh the holes in the net here but wow what an absolute treat um caught him on a dry fly here i was using some some nymphs some some salmon flies that i picked up here locally earlier and uh subsurface just wasn't working and then i've seen a couple of fish rising so i decided to throw on a dry and very first cast on the dry there he was so we'll cast here again there's a pool there's a pool right here yeah we're on another fish on here guys another small little brookie oh look at him just absolutely gorgeous come on buddy lively little guy about the same size as the first one that we got just beautiful come on get in here there we go just gorgeous look at that guys just look at that with the current heat leaving just a short fishing window of only a couple hours in the very early morning I ended on a good note with those two little brook trout. Head back and enjoy the rest of the day with my family to eat some more great food back at the lodge and maybe take a dip in the river. As much as I'd like to keep throwing some line out in this beautiful piece of water, I decide to just try again the next day, but this time maybe with a local guide that Alex had recommended. All right, we're back and it is actually the next day. I did not get a chance to fish again uh, yesterday evening. So right now it is the next day, but today I'm actually out with uh, a local guide. Uh, this is Patty, Patty Poye. Patty Poye. Patty Poye from Poye's Guiding Service over here. And uh, we're in the Middle River right now, right? Middle River in Victoria County. We're in Middle River in Victoria County. So this is not the Marjorie. Um, and we actually can't target salmon here. Nope, uh, the Marguerite is the only river in Nova Scotia that you can legally target salmon during the summer months. Yeah, so right now we're gonna be targeting some trout. Uh, there should be some brook trout here. Uh, brook trout, we have a run of steelhead and brown trout. Uh, we're gonna hike up the bank and we're gonna fish the tail end of the run. Uh, just uh, the foam line down along the bank here with the deadfall. Uh, then we're going to come down and work our way through uh, 
the run here and we're gonna hit some pools further down the river. All right guys, so let's get some lines in the water and let's see if we can get some fish today. Since I'm fairly new to fishing moving water for trout, because we don't have these type of streams and rivers in Manitoba, I get a quick masterclass from Patty on how to find the fish in the water and how to cast for them. Wind depth, yep. shade, shade cover. Uh, I know right here the sun's not up right yet, but uh, typically as the sun comes up, you're looking for undercut bank, uh, log, log jams, or uh, some like moving that. water with some rock structure they can uh, get in beside. Okay. Depth varies on water movement. Like in here with still water, you won't find them in here with this still, still water. They want moving, a little moving bit of water. Movement. And like I say, like the foam line is the feeding line. Yeah. And especially for trout, that's the main, the main channel off the river where they'll be sitting. Okay. That's it. So I can still probably cast out this way to the foam line, eh? Yeah. Yeah. You can still look at there. Not seeing anything rising typically this, this time of the morning. You're seeing, seeing them rise know, up. Even a little salmon pair and, and the smaller trout there. Yeah. They're rising up above. Am I letting my line get too far ahead of the dry? Uh, no, it's all right. Like I say, in the dry, you're seeing it come up and take yeah. it. You should have enough time to uh, set it. Well, you're saying again, it's, you know, just consciously take five seconds, six seconds. Yeah. Pick it up, drop it anew. Just, I find they're, if they're there and they're going to take it, they usually take it within the first first few seconds. First, first five, six seconds of it hitting. So, right in close to the bank over there. Yep. We work through the run and see a couple of fish rise. But unfortunately, we didn't have any luck in this area. So we end up going to a different spot. We got a bunch of salmon fry right here. That's a, that might be a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hopefully you can go ahead and up here. All right. All Lo right. and behold, sometimes Let's all you gotta do podcast. is go where the fish are. All right, we finally got on a fish. Mission complete. <laughs> Worked hard to get him. Yeah, that was the hard work. He's feisty too. You want to play him too much here? There we go. Beautiful. First fish here. There we go. There we are. Nice. <laughs> You're right, as soon as it drops. Oh, oh, another one? Nice. <laughs> This one feels oh, slightly good. larger. Yeah, it's a nice little, little carrot. Nice. And take him up, I can. Uh... Yeah. Oh, yeah, this one's better size than. There we go. Nice little speckled. Beautiful. Flies out. Oh yeah. Look at that. Oh, well, oh, there he goes. Back to the water. <laughs> Off he goes. There you go. Where does he come in? He goes out. <laughs> there. there we go. Well, at least we got on some fish now. So, downsizing the fly really helped there. Yeah, downsizing and then little guys going under. Yeah.
Got, got another one, another small one. I missed them like three times yeah, over there in the same spot. Yeah. Up. Small brookie. Right there. Yep. yep. Beautiful. We can find his grandfather so much. Yeah. There you go. Off you go, buddy. Yeah, even when it was swinging like that, like yep. unnaturally, they still take it, they eh? They still take it, yep. Yep. All right, one last try for that guy there. See if he takes it again. Yeah. Hey, oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, he went flying. Yeah. Small guy is right. Well, that was that was a quick release if I've ever seen one. <laughs> uh. Well, we got him though. Beautiful. Very nice. What is he? Speck Little speckled. Nice. Sweet, what a beauty. That's a good size one too. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> Off he goes. Over there. <laughs> what you call oh, he's going back to the same spot there too. Well, I hooked it back here. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'll try a little cast, maybe there's a little one in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best one of the day so far. I love how clear the water is out here though. Yeah, it's like, pretty, uh, like you, it's pretty nice. I uh, could literally see him swimming back up into his little hole there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think it's a decent sized one too this time. Yes. Casting right into that foam line over there. Yeah. Oh, he got out. <laughs> Small enough to fit through the holes in my net. <laughs> you know, even though we're not catching like crazy today, nothing, no monsters or we're not catching crazy numbers or anything, but you know what? I'm learning. I'm I'm learning a lot about how to fish uh, rivers and moving water like this, since I don't get a lot of chance to do that where I am in Manitoba. So, plus the scenery, absolutely beautiful. Can't beat it. So definitely, still well worth it. All right. Nice little brookie again. Awesome. All right, buddy. There you go. Woo! Well, guys, that is it. We actually ended up catching a bunch more fish after that, but my GoPro ran out of battery, so I didn't get any of the other ones there on film. But we caught a few today already um, that we did get on film, so that was good. I was starting to get super worried there. I thought I was gonna end up with like no fish for the day. But luckily, surprisingly too, and uh, you know, with the odds being against us with the time of day being the middle of the afternoon, it was getting, it was starting to get super hot. I was surprised that we actually started catching fish now compared to like early in the morning when we were first out. And I uh, had a really great time out here in Nova Scotia, met a ton of great people uh, from the folks at the big Intervale Fishing Lodge there. Uh, Herman and Ruth, they were fantastic. Alex from the Tying Scotsman. Make sure if you guys are ever out here in Nova Scotia, out in Cape Breton Island, be sure to check some of these guys out guys. I, I highly recommend staying at the Big Intervale Fishing Lodge. If you need to get local fly supplies, be sure to check out Alex at the Tying Scotsman. And if you're looking for a guide, I highly suggest Paddy Poye here as well. I'm gonna put 
all their contact info in the description down below as well. That's all for today though guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll be seeing you guys in the next one. Peace.